Hey, this is Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. We've got a new unboxing. This is WizKids' much-anticipated Dice Master set, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's been months in the waiting. Supposed to come out in January. Actually, be coming out in May. Uh, and the set's a little bit different than the previous. But for those who don't know Dice Masters, it's a fantastic game. Uh, it's a collectible dice game uh, that kind of mixes deck building with uh, trading card games like Magic. You go and you build your teams with uh, cards and dice. And you uh, you know buy your dice and then you attack your opponents, knocking them down from life. So it's kind of a mix of these two genres. Very popular, uh, doing quite well. The great scene out there uh, across the United States and, and the rest of the world, um, popular uh, regionals and you know national championships, international championships. It's a great game. Check it out. Now, with part of the fun of the game is it mixes all these different genres and uh, and um, properties together. So WizKids, much like their game HeroClix, has a bunch of different sets for Dice Masters as well. There are sets based off of DC Comics, Marvel Comics, Dungeons & Dragons, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Now Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is kind of a comic animated genre movie mix of a whole bunch of things and they are a new set. Now this one's a little bit different than the rest of the releases. Normally with releases you get a starter set and you get these gravity feeds. Uh, instead, WizKids is putting out what you have uh, and see in front of you is this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Dice Masters box. Now it might look like a collector's box that we normally see, but it's slightly different than that. Instead you get everything you need just in this one box. It comes with 92 custom dice in the game. You get 48 character dice, 32 sidekick dice, 12 basic action dice, 62 cards that includes 48 characters, 10 basic cards, 4 reminder cards, 1 Dice Masters rule book, 4 paper play bats, 4 dice bags, four dice or 2 dice storage trays that holds over 300 dice. Now you'll hear that and you say, well that's way more than two people uh, need to play. You are correct, and that's what's a little bit different about this set. They actually made this for four players. It's rather appropriate, right? If you get four turtles, you're going to need four players to, to have them all. So the game is about 30 minutes, ages 14 and up, and two to four players instead of the normal two-player game that you see for Dice Masters. Now, before we look at this, we're also going to look at this. Now, this is the playmat that comes for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's also team boxes. Uh, we did not get those early. Instead, we're going to show off the playmat and put it in front of us while we go through everything. So you can see some really nice, solid art uh, featuring Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with uh, Shredder on top that and they're familiar, like purpling green coloring. Um, nice mat, really like it. Uh, one thing that I will point out that I enjoy is that it is easy to read everything. Some of these playmats have had some issues here and there. Uh, where I thought it was a bit difficult to read and see the various uh, sections of the mats. But this one's actually really, really simple. Uh, it's a nice mat. I like it. Uh, definitely different colors and it'll stand out, so that's good. Now we're going to crack open this collector set that WizKids hooked us up with early uh, and show off everything that you see inside. Go, off, uh, go over the various uh, dice that are in there and the various cards. Uh, so first we've got this nice playbook. Uh, not only does it have its rules for uh, the normal game, but it also has this four-player variant to allow multiple people to play, including uh, some demo uh, information so people can uh, get going. Um, now, for those who don't want to play or buy this, uh, you can download this online at the WizKids site. They do allow the various rule books uh, to be downloaded, which is great. Um, also included, as I said, for play mats, if you don't want the play mat which I just showed off, the collector's box also comes with a bunch of play mats themselves. Uh, each one for each of the various turtles. Of course, you've got uh, swords for Leonardo. Uh, you got the nunchucks for Michelangelo, size for Ra uh, Raphael, and the bow staff for Donatello. And I'm going to do my best to avoid using tubular and all that stuff. Uh, various terms for the turtles. Uh, as I said, there's also dice bags now to be able to pick your dice. You need to blindly do it in a bag. So there is four bags. Again, one for each turtle. Of course, you've got their weapon that they're known for and their color underneath. Um, what's also kind of cool is the art that's on it. Reminds me more of the classic, classic Eastman style than kind of the newer IDW stuff. Um, or even the animated stuff, so it's it definitely is uh, picking up from uh, throughout the ages of the turtles. But really, what you want to see is the dice and 
the cards that are included in this carrying case. Now, one of the things that stands out is the carrying case is a little bit different. Uh, not only do you have the dice in here to hold uh, spaces for to put all your dice for this game, uh, but you also have, of course, sections for cards, some more uh, spaces for dice, uh, or the uh, the actual bags, and then in here is where they were keeping reaction dice and all of that. So uh, for those who don't know the game at all, we've got the normal uh, player's dice, uh, the um, <clears throat> the sidekick dice. There's enough here for four players. Each player is going to have four of those. Those are all pretty basic, nothing too crazy about that. Of course we have action dice. Uh, each of those is a color and we'll kind of explain that a little bit later. Uh, so there's four sets of three colors each. The colors to me are purple, uh, red, blue, um, okay I guess there's only an orange. I guess it's orange. Yeah, I guess it's orange. Yep, orange, purple, blue. Those are uh, so for those we'll kind of go over the uh, the action cards later on. Actually, we'll do that next, uh, and those go on. Uh, uh, these go underneath, so you know what color die goes to which action card. For those who don't play, it's really really simple. It might seem way more complicated than it really is. All right. So before we get into the character cards, we're going to do talk about the action cards. So action cards. Normally, you have two cards uh, for each player. Each player picks their their two cards in which case there's four cards total, and we can see that there's a whole bunch here. We're going to go over them, describing each one in, I believe, alpha order. And action cards are a dice uh, that either player can purchase and add to their rolling. Um, they tend to be really helpful and can uh, oftentimes sway the game. So let's kind of go over each of them. And what's neat immediately looking at these is that the uh, dice or the cards aren't takes a little bit from uh, each era of the Turtles. There's old school Eastman. There is kind of the animated uh, that I think a lot of people will be familiar with. There's more modern IDW. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of everything, which is kind of cool. So if you're a Turtle fan in general, you're probably going to dig this set. So first up, we've got Cowabunga. Its cost is four. Uh, if you have exactly one character die in the field zone, it gets plus four attack and overcrush until the end of your turn. If you have more than one character die in the field zone, instead all of your character dice get plus one attack. Pretty good. Uh, interesting if you have, uh, let's say, a rush team or attack team. I can see that one coming regular in play. Next, we've got Enrage. Cost of four as well as up to two of your target character dice get plus one attack and overcrush until end of turn. Not sure necessarily why you would use that instead of Kawabunga other than the overcrush, but uh, yeah, I'd probably take the Kawabunga over that one. Next we have Give Me a Break, which is a cost of three. Target non-turtle character die can't block until end of turn. It has a global of play, uh, pay one um, energy, the uh, lighting energy until end of turn when a character die is assigned to block. Uh, deal it one damage. This could be useful. Uh, there we go. Next we got Heroes in a Half Shell. Cost is two. Fairly cheap. Target character die gets plus two attack until end of turn. If it's a turtle card uh, character, it also gets plus two uh, defense. I can see that one becoming popular and uh, in the game. Lethal Blow, uh, cost is 5, a little expensive. Move target level 1 character die from the field zone to the prep area. If you do a star instead, target any character die in the field zone. Two uh, stars instead, move any target character die to the bag. That one could be pretty huge for folks who want to cycle through car, uh, dice and uh, get things in and out. Also probably to screw up your opponent if you really want. Pizza, this is I think the first ever uh, basic action card to cost 1. Uh, it's gain one life if you, uh, you may not use this basic action die if you have 15 or more life. Globals pay a shield once during your turn if you have less than 10 life, gain one life. Uh, that could be really, really interesting um, in the game. There's not a whole lot out there that I think helps you gain life, so anything uh, could be helpful. That one I could see becoming a big deal uh, in the game for cost of one. It's basically going to be whoever goes first is going to snatch them all, I would imagine. 
Uh, next, we've got Reckless Abandon, cost of 3, deal 1 damage to each character die, including your own. Uh, if you roll a star, de instead deal 1 damage to each player. 2 is instead deal 1 damage to each player and each character die. Nice way to get rid of sidekicks out of the field. Next, we got Special Delivery, uh, cost of 4, draw 2 dice from your bag and roll them. Place them in your reserve pool. Again, that could be pretty big for uh, folks looking to get dice out of their bag. Uh, three, tactical cover. Your character dice get plus two defense. Uh, if either of the stars is also the character gets plus, uh, also target character gets plus three defense. Global pay a shield. Target character die gets plus one D until end of turn. We're seeing a lot when it comes to attack and the defense which uh, makes sense if you really think about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where there's a lot of action and, and fighting that goes on. Finally, for basic action cards, uh, Turtle Van with a cost of 2. Continuous may send this die to the use pile to prevent all damage to, tar to target blocking character. That could become a pretty big deal. Overall, um, I'm liking these, these cards. I can see a lot of them being used in the game um, and being uh, tested to see how good they are. I mean, it's... Pretty solid stuff overall. I'm actually pretty impressed with them. So there's quite a few already. I'm going through my mind of how I would use them in the game and what type of teams I would use uh, to put them on. Let's go through the uh, various cards themselves and show them off. Uh, we have a whole bunch of characters running the history of the Turtles. We're going to do them three at a time. Uh, going through each and every single one of them. Uh, first up, we've got April O'Neil. Show off the dice. Now, this is actually kind of interesting. Is all the all the dice are broken down into uh, their own bags, making it really easy to find it. Come on. There we go. You can see her symbol is a. Uh, camera, which makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, she's got three cards. Um, first two are cost of two, and the final one's cost of three. Uh, her dice are 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 3, and 0, 1, 5, a max of three dice. Uh, first one's Channel 6 Reporter. It's an ally, which means the card, uh, the die, is, counts as a sidekick in the field zone. When fielded, give another target sidekick or turtle character plus one attack until end of turn. Next we get April as part of the family, uh, again ally, uh, when fielded give another target sidekick or turtle character die plus one defense until end of turn. And then finally, uh, ninja training, uh, when fielded draw die if it is a sidekick or turtle character die, roll it and add it to your reserve pool. I can see that one being really, really useful. Now, overall, those three together, I'm liking them. Um, I can see a lot of them being used in a lot of rush teams or maybe like Human Torch um, attack. You know, the fact that it's uh, the 0 1 1 for the final. I mean, you're looking at a sidekick that costs two, but the 0 1 3 and a 0 cost 1 5, I think is actually impressive. The 0 cost 1 5, being able to pull out sidekicks, roll them, um, I can see that one becoming regularly used in gaming and on teams. So next up, we've got Baxter Stockman, of course, three, uh, just like I think everyone will have. Uh, first up, we've, uh, we'll go through his dice, show them off. He's got these kind of cool purple and black, and the die looks like a insect fly-ish thing that he is. First up, we've got Evil Scientist, cost of four, when fielded, move all mousers uh, dice from your use pile to your prep area. So obviously, if you're playing TMNT and you're using mousers, this is going to be one you want to use. Which makes sense, since Baxter Stockman is the one who created the mouse mousers. Uh, we've got muted, mutagenic researcher. While Baxter Stockman is active, all mousers dice get plus two uh, attack and are free to field. Again, pretty kind of cool on that one. It'll cost the five, a little expensive. Finally, well, cost of five, Fly Guy. When fielded, you may purchase a Mouser's Die for one generic and immediately roll it, place it in your reserve pool. That's pretty cool uh, if you want to get Mouser's out. Um, for his, overall, the zero cost three and four, I think it's pretty solid. And a one cost four, five. Uh, you know, if you're using Mouser's, I can see you want to be use uh, Baxter Stock and those two going together. 
uh, could be pretty cool, but again, it really, I think, depends on if you're using mousers in your gaming. So next up, we've got Bebop. And I know Bebop is making his debut in the next film, and I believe they just made his debut in the IDW comics. Of course, he's a classic character. Uh, we've got Troublesome. While Rocksteady is active, Bebop gets plus two attack and plus two defense. That makes a whole lot of sense for a cost of four. Mutant Warhog, cost of five. When Field Leader of Rocksteady is active, deal one damage to target player. For cost of six, Pighead. When Rocksteady is active, you may reroll your Bebop dice anytime it shows an energy face during your roll and reroll step. Uh, so I, I forgot to mention the dice is zero, uh, the level one, zero, two, four, level two, one, three, six, and level three, two, four, seven. Now it makes sense that uh, Bebop is a lot to do with Rocksteady. If you're not using Rocksteady, you probably don't want to use Bebop. He's a little bit expensive, I think, but the dice itself is actually pretty cheap to field. So there is that. So if you can get them out, it could be worthwhile just because he's relatively cheap. And I'm noticing a lot of these dice are, are pretty inexpensive. A lot of them have zero costs or one cost uh, for a good chunk of them. Next, we got Casey Jones, the vigilante himself, the masked hockey player. Show off the dice, hopefully. Casey Jones' dice is black with uh, his mask as the symbol. There we go. Uh, his dice overall are 0, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2, 4, 3. 0, 2, 2 is not bad. Uh, the 1, 3, 3 I think is pretty solid. For cost 2, for a lot of them, I think this is a, a pretty good character to add. So first up, we've got Pain 101. Uh, if your life total is less than 15 and Casey Jones blocks or is blocked by a sidekick or villain, gain one life. Again, there's not a whole lot in the game that allows you to gain life. It's not a mechanic that's really prevalent in the game. Also cost two is when Casey Jones attacks, you may choose any number of target sidekicks or villain dice to block Casey Jones' character dice in any arrangement you choose. That's kind of cool. And this one, I think, it reminds me, I believe Batgirl has the same um, ability of this one. This one's cost three, Lunatic Vigilante. Casey Jones can't be blocked by sidekicks or villain character dice. I believe Batgirl from World's Finest has that exact same ability for the exact same cost, so really comes down to is who's going to be the better uh, dice choice uh, between those two. So it could be, we could have an alternative for that cheap bat girl that I think a lot of people use, though I think she might be cost two. I could be wrong. All right, next we've got our first turtle. We've got Donatello. Of course, he's got green dye with purple and his bow staff. kind of see it. Exactly what you would expect. Uh, turtles. Kind of expensive, <laughs> expensive each one. Um, I do like the fact that they're the Eastman uh, original when the turtles all had um, the same color bandanas. They all had red, believe it or not. A lot of people don't that. So cost of four. Pretty generic. Uh, the dice is, the field is level one, 142. Level two is 144. And level three is 255. Cost of four is probably about the best you're going to get on this one. Nothing too special there. Next, we've got Donnie. It's the second one. Turtle Power. While Donatello is active, other team and your other turtle character dice cost one less to purchase. So it's a pretty big deal. For cost of five, since they're all seem to be probably pretty expensive. That could be a really helpful. Next, we got while Donatello is active, when you feel the different turtle character die, spin that die up one level. If that die is already level three, instead it draw and roll a die. That's actually pretty cool for cost of five. Hopefully all the, the turtles work together to uh, do some cool things. Um, next we've got Foot Ninja. Um, we're going to have to bring this one out because I've got an ability that I haven't memorized. All right, so next, first up we've got, well, we're going to show them off. Dice are black and red, as you'd expect, with the foot symbol on the dice. Cool dice. Overall, um, or it's kind of that bluish, black-ish. We'll call it navy blue. 
Uh, all right, so the first one's got Swarm. So Swarm is, while a die with Swarm is active and you draw another copy of that die from your bag during your clear and draw step, draw and roll an extra die from your bag. Uh, you do this for each matching die with Swarm drawn from your bag. So it's a way to bring a whole bunch of cards out uh, or dice out. So cost of two. It's pretty cheap. The uh, die itself is 0 one, 1 so not much better than a uh, sidekick. 2 is 0 2 1, so not a little bit better. And the final is 1 2 2, so we're looking at cheap guys to uh, get them out into the field. Okay, next we got Ninja uh, Syndicate. He's got Ally, which again counts as a sidekick. Foot Ninja gets plus 1 attack and plus 1 defense for each other sidekick die in the field zone. That could be pretty big for a cost of 3. Next, we got also cost of three is Robotic Ninja Warriors. Uh, while Foot Ninja is active, your other sidekick dice get plus one attack when blocking. Uh, the Foot Ninja doesn't give itself plus one attack, so that's pretty good. To clarify some stuff, sometimes these games need to get a little help. So overall, Foot Ninja is not bad. I kind of dig in that cost to Swarm. Um, I can see it being used with some of the uh, uh, weenie decks out there that whose entire goals are to overwhelm their opponents. Uh, next we got Fugitoid. It's a black die with kind of the head of Fugitoid as the symbol. Let's see it. Uh, the dice for level 1 is 131, 2 is 142, 3 is 153. At the basic, it costs 3. Professor Honeycut. he's a villain. Which I won't remember the Fugitoid being a villain. I always thought he was kind of like neutral. At times he was good. Um, next we got Neutrino Scientist. Uh, while Fugitoid is active, other villain and turtle character dice can't attack unless their owner pays one to ignore this effect until end of turn for cost of four. That could become pretty handy in games. Alright, hopefully you can see that one. And finally, we have cost of four, high-tech body. While Fugitoid is active, other villain and turtle character dice get minus one attack. For cost of four, I mean, he's a one field with a five attack, three dice. It's a pretty big deal um, to be able to knock other villains and turtles out of there. I can see him being used uh, if villains were to become a big deal in the meta, which I don't think there really are right now, but you never know. All right, next we got Krang. Krang, of course, big giant brain and a big giant robot. Uh, his dice are kind of that yellow with pink, just like you would expect for Krang. Uh, Alright, so first up, it's really expensive, I'm not going to lie on that one. Cost of six is uh, the cheapest, Ruler of Dimension X. Uh, he's a villain. While Krang is active, if one of your other villain character dice attacks and is unblocked, re-roll them after damage is dealt. If they land on a character face, place them in your prep area instead of the used pile. Uh, Crane's dice is 137, 148, and 259. So, pretty hefty character if you can get it out. Next, we have Regenerate. Regenerate is if this character is KO'd, roll it. If you roll a character face, return it to the field, but not the attack zone. Uh, otherwise, move the die to your prep area. Cost of six. This is Technodrome Commander. And finally, with a cost of seven. It's Utram Warlord. Well, uh, when fielded, move all sidekick dice from your opponent's used pile and prep area to their bag. Great way to flood your opponent with uh, sidekick dice. Kind of screw them over. I can see that being really irritating in the game. Um, overall, like the concepts, really expensive though, so I don't really see him being used a whole lot in the game. All right, next we've got um, Leonardo. Of course, Leonardo. Green dice with the sword. As his symbol, uh, the dice are 0, 2, 4, 1, 3, 5, and 1, 4, 6. Interesting. Yep, the, uh, the turtles are looking different when it comes to their stats. So that's kind of cool. Each one's a little bit different based off of them. And again, he uses the Eastman um, art. Uh, for cost of 4, um, the dice lo level 1 is 0, 2, 4, 2 is 1, 3, 5, and 3 is 1, 4, 6. 4 is pretty basic. You don't get anything with it. Uh, next up, we've got a five. Uh, he's got turtle power, so while Leonardo is active, when a different turtle character die of yours 
uh, would be KO'd. Instead, KO a Leonardo die and gain two life. Yeah. Great way to gain some life in the game. And then finally, we've got a cost of six, Big Brother. One of Leonardo's active other turtle character dice costs one less to purchase. So if you can get one out, you can eventually start getting some really cheap turtle dice out there. Uh, next up, we got Michelangelo. And his is exactly what you'd expect. Green dye, orange coloring, with uh, nunchucks is his symbol. There we go, you can see that. Just like the other dice, or the other turtles, uh, the lowest level cost of four is Party Dude. There's nothing to it. Finally, uh, uh, next is uh, Mikey. Is turtle power. Michelangelo's active other turtle character dice costs one less to purchase. That'd be handy. And then we got Parte. Whenever a different uh, turtle character die is blocked, spin each Michelangelo character die up one level. For each Michelangelo character die already at level three, instead KO target blocking character die. That could be that could be useful at cost of six. Good luck purchasing it. Next is Mousers. Now we said with the the Baxter Stockman, the Baxter would be worthwhile depending on how the Mousers are. Now the Mousers are the orange die with a grayish coloring and the Mouser symbol. Is there uh, the dice are 0, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, and 1, 3, 3. So really relatively cheap, which is pretty good. So so far I'm I'm seeing what I uh, I'm liking what I see. Got metal teeth. When fielded KO another target character die with a when fielded ability, unless its owner pays two life. Cost of three, that could be a big deal in the game. I could see that one being a uh, a game changer. Uh, two spare parts. Mousers get plus one attack and plus one defense while another player has an active character with a pl uh, one fielded ability. You know, for the cheap cost, it can be pretty helpful. And keep in mind, all these can only have three, so you're not going to be filling tons of mousers out there. Uh, next, we got Rat Eradicator. When mousers block or is blocked by a character die with a one fielded ability, roll that die on an energy face, move it to the prep area, otherwise, leave it on the rolled face. Kind of like that first one with the remove uh, when fielded for cost of three. Um, yeah, when fielded KO tar another target character die with a when fielded ability unless its owner pays two life. I like that. I think that one is going to get a lot of play in the game. Uh, it's a pretty big deal. If this set was legal at the next round, uh, next local uh, regional, I would probably be throwing that in my deck. There's at least two or three cards so far that I would be seeing uh, that would be seeing gameplay for me. All right, next up we got Raphael. Green dice, red with the size, not too shocking as we've seen with the other turtles. Cost of four, uh, he's got nothing on it, uh, that's cool but rude. Uh, the dice themselves are 0, 3, 3, 1, 4, 4, and 2, 5, 5. Alright, next we've got anger issues. When a different turtle character die attacks, deal one damage to target character die. Could be kind of useful. And then we got Turtle Power while Raphael is active. Another turtle character dice costs one less to purchase. Now we've seen that with all. That one is a cost of five. It seems all the turtles have that uh, for at least one of their cards. All right, next we've got Rock Steady. We've seen Bebop. Now we got Rock Steady. Rock Steady, of course, will probably be, uh, have a lot to do with him. Uh, a lot to do with Bebop. The dice kind of fit. It's got that coloring of rock steady the grayish with the green and i'm gonna go with it looks like his hat and the rhino horn uh cost of fours rough and tumble while bebop is active rock steady gains plus two attack plus two defense uh, his dice though is uh, zero three three one five three and two six four for a cost of four it's not that bad to get out there All right, next we got Armed and Dangerous, cost of four, while Bebop is active, Rock Study gains Overcrush and takes no damage from blocking character dice. This includes sidekicks. That's pretty awesome. Then finally we got Mutant Rhino, cost of five, when fielded, if Bebop is active, KO, target opposing level one character. 
The one's not as much. I can see it being useful, but eh. there are some other ones I'd rather do. Alright, we're coming up on the last three characters. Next we got Shredder. Um, show him off. His die are purple. Not too shocking with gray coloring. And his helmet is the symbol. Um, Alright, first up we've got cost of six. It's Rukusaki. Uh, while Shredder is active, each player loses one life at the start of their turn. That could be pretty pretty interesting. Um, it says each player, so that means you're going to lose your, it yourself, but there's, remember, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here to gain life as well. Uh, his dice are 144, 166, and 288. So he's pretty beefy when it comes to stats. Next we got Old Rival. While Shredder deals combat damage to a turtle character die, your opponent loses three life. And then we got a uh, cost of eight. It's a really expensive one. Field then move all villain dice from your used pile to your prep area. That could be a big deal if you got a villain team, though. Cost of eight. So I'm going to be easy to get it out there. All right, we've got two more. Uh, we got Splinter. Uh, there's actually two Splinter, two different versions of Splinter, which I think is fascinating. Uh, first up, we'll call them the animated version. The die are brown with a little green. It looks like a bonsai tree. There we go. Alright, cost of five is Hibato Yoshi. Uh, when fielded, your lightning and fist character dice get plus one attack until end of turn. I'm going to go out on a limb and say lightning and fist. All right, Donatello is a mask, Leonardo is shield, Michelangelo is a fist, and Raphael is lightning. So he's benefiting Raphael and Michelangelo. Um, his dice is 154, 265, and 277. So really cheap if you can purchase them to get uh, him out. Next we got Father, cost of six. When fielded, draw die. If it is a lightning or fist die, you may deal two damage to target opposing character die. Return it to your bag. Next we got uh, Radical Rat. When a fielded target opposing character die, can't block your uh, lightning or fist character dice, cost of seven. All right, and then finally we've got another Splinter. And his is kind of a red maroon-ish with orange and it's Splinter's face. What's supposed to be Splinter's face is the symbol. That die is uh, 145, 147, 268. First splinter is Ninja Master. It costs a 5 and 1 fielded. Your turtle character dice get plus 2 attack and plus 2 defense until end of turn. Uh, 6 is Sensei. Uh, sensei, uh, when fielded, draw a die. If it is a mask or shield die, roll it and place it in your reserve pool. Otherwise, put it in your use pile. So this one's more geared towards Donatello and Leonardo. Whereas the other one is geared towards Raphael and Michelangelo. And then finally, we've got Master Splinter. Uh, cost of seven. When fielded, target opposing character die. Can't block your uh, mask or shield character dice. And your turtle character dice gain overcrush this turn. It is if you can get him out. Uh, so overall, there's a lot of cards. Now, first thing up... Uh, this set should cost probably about $24.99 once it hits its stores. As I said, it, it's supposed to come, I think, late in May. Um, uh, the I think it's a great set. I mean, the fact that you can get everything in one purchase, to me, is a huge bonus. It's really cool. Very smart of WizKids to do. I have to give them massive props for that. Uh, the four-way game, I think, is going to be really fascinating. I actually look forward to uh, trying to play it. Um, the right going through this right away, there's cards that I would be playing. It's at least uh, about ten different cards that I would be playing uh, in this game. A lot of the villains, I think, stand out. Some of those foot shoulders are, I think, pretty cheap. Some of the basic action cards are pretty cool. Um, overall, I mean, it's, it's a solid, solid set. I mean, the fact that you get everything in one go, the cards I think are really, really good. It's a great introduction. I think there's some great additions here for people who are into the game. I'm going to go sit on it, come back with a little bit more strategies to what I'm thinking 
as far as uh, the set as a whole and what I might use and how I might use them. Uh, we're going to break it down and go from there. But overall, thank you, Whiskits, for the hookup. We really, really appreciate it. This has been the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Dice Masters Dice Building Game Set. It'll be out this May. Uh, you get a metric shit ton of dice and cards uh, for your gameplay. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching. If you'd like to get your own set, we've got some links below. Um, I don't believe there'll be affiliate links, but they might. Uh, and you can pre-order your set. But as always, thank you for watching. That alone helps support our site. You can catch us every single day at graphicpolicy.com. Of course, we're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep rolling those die and keep it geeky.